right now. Listen up. Three, two, one. It's showtime. That's great. This is ridiculous. 99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth. Right now. Ooh. That was the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. Seven minutes after four o'clock on the 22nd day of July in the third millennium of our Savior Jesus Christ. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is the last hour in this week of Max World Live. And uh, one of the things I thought we'd uh, talk about a little bit is uh, uh, something that A.W. Tozer, T-O-Z-E-R, said in um, a book he wrote called This World, Playground or Battleground. And this is in Chapter 2. And the headline is, or I guess it's not a headline. uh, what, What do you call that? Headline. I call it a headline. The title for this piece is a sacred world needs a fearless church. No one can blame people of being afraid. The world is in for a baptism of fire, and whether or not this present conflict is the beginning of the ordeal, such a baptism will surely come sooner or later. God declares this by the voice of all the holy prophets since time began. There is no escaping it. But are not we Christians a people of another order? Do we not claim a place in the purpose of God altogether above all uncertainties of time and chance in which the sons of this world are caught? Have we not been given a prophetic preview? Of all those things that are to come upon the earth, can anything take us unaware? Surely Bible reading Christians should be the last persons on earth to give away to hysteria. They are redeemed from their past offenses, kept in their present circumstances by the power of an all-powerful God. And their future is safe in his hands. God has promised to support us in the flood, protect them from the fire, feed them in the famine, shield them against their enemies, hide them in his safe chambers until the indignation is passed and receive them at last into eternal tabernacles. If we are called upon to suffer, we may be perfectly sure that we shall be rewarded for every pain and every blessing for every tear. Underneath will be the everlasting arms and within will be the deep assurance that all is well with our souls. Nothing can separate us from the love of God, not death, nor life, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature. This is a big old world. And it's full of darkness. But nowhere in its vast empire is there one thing, one thing of which a real Christian needs to be afraid of. Surely a fear-ridden Christian has never examined his or her defenses. I want to read that again. Surely a fear-ridden Christian has never examined his or her defenses. A fear-stricken church cannot help a scared world. We who are in the secret place of safety must begin to talk and act like it. We above all who dwell upon the earth should be calm, hopeful, buoyant, and cheerful. We'll never convince the sacred world that there is peace. Scared world. I'm sorry. We'll never convince the scared world that there is peace on the cross if we continue to exhibit the same fears as those who make no profession of Christianity. 
Again, if you want to Google that, A.W. Tozer, T-O-Z-E-R, A Sacred World Needs a Fearless Church. Scared World. A, why do I do that? I don't know. I, oh, you know what I do? I, I put the, I, I'm di- dyslexic. I take the C and the A. and All right. I do that all the time. But A Scared World Needs a Fearless Church. Yeah. yeah. And it's an article taken from This World, Playground or Battleground, and it's Chapter 2. So let's talk about that for a minute. Frank, you always got your underwear in a bunch over stuff that's going on on Earth. Uh, well, Why? Okay. You're one of the most biblically knowledgeable men I know. Uh, well, first off, uh, we determined the other day, speaking of Joel Olstein and stuff, that temporal blessings aren't for everyone. Uh, obviously, temporal blessings weren't for everyone that went to the lion's dens, to the gladiator arenas. Uh, some of those people died. But they died having the faith and the knowledge that they would be in the eternal kingdom. So we're not to be afraid of death. Death is something that, that we're not to be afraid of. But, but we I'm are, not afraid of death. I'm afraid of living. But, but we're, given a, a, we're given the commission and the opportunity to go out and make disciples of men. So we should, um, to do that, we have to have a, a world in which we... Um, People are safe enough to go out and at least get them the gospel. My favorite thing that A.W. Tozer said in this is right at the end, actually. He said, we, we will never convince the scared world that there is peace if we continue to exhibit the same fears as those who make no profession of Christianity. If the Christian world, if the church celebrates destruction, celebrates fear, celebrates the idea that the world is going to hell in a handbasket, if we announce that from the mountaintops and we display fear, a sense of fear, We are no different than the world. And then how can we, Frank, share the gospel? What good news do we have to offer the world if we live in the same darkness that they live in? I'm here with you in darkness. I have no hope. Maybe when I die, things will be better. But right now, for tomorrow and the next day, things are just going to blow. And so I can't offer you any real hope. What, What good is that message if we're just as afraid as our neighbor? So what you're saying is when I mentioned about getting a 30-day supply of food, that's showing my fear, right? Not necessarily. I mean, there's, there's, a, right, there's a difference between being afraid and being wise. Um, but maybe. It depends on our – it really does depend upon our attitude. You know, I think one of the things – this is related to, in my mind – We talk about death. 10 out of 10 people die. 100% of folks alive die. It's one of the great uh, enemies of of life. It's the great enemy of of humanity is death. But we'll all die. Well, there were two that weren't. But that's in the Bible. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I don't know how to do the statistics on that. (laughs) Um, I'll have to to adjust my ratings there. (laughs) Um, Some great baseball statistician right now (laughs) is calculating how that works out. All humanity and the two... Um, but Christians should mourn differently. We mourn, we, we ought to mourn differently. We grieve. We're sad. We're heartbroken when people die because death is our enemy. Death is not our friend. Death is not good. Death has been defeated in Jesus Christ, but death still comes. So we mourn and we're sad, but we, we should mourn in a different way. And, and the question is, do we? And when we hear these terrible stories, when we, when we hear of what's going on in Munich, are we afraid just like everybody else is afraid? Or do we see this as a product of a sinful fallen world, people living out their ideas, and we want to be different people than them, and we choose to live a different life? How do we respond? Well, it says fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We're not in abject, terrified fear of the Lord. It's respect, respect of God. And sure, I would disagree with his, you, but yeah. We're, we're, we're in respect that he's in charge. 
I don't think we fear and shake and quiver in our boots because of the Lord. But but do, but do you? I, I would I would suggest that if you did fear uh, the Lord, if you did shake in your boots, if you were terrified at the thought of being in the presence of a holy and mighty God, I think your life would be different. I think you would live a different life if you were in fact terrified of the Almighty God. But what happens is most of us are not afraid of the Almighty God. We're afraid of some small, weak little terrorist with a gun. That person. That person makes us afraid, but the almighty God doesn't make us afraid. That's why the Bible says the the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, because there is someone we ought to fear. It is God almighty. It is not a terrorist with a handgun. Well, most people in the Bible, if you remember, when they saw an angel or they saw whatever, they went, they fell on their face. And what was what? Do not fear. I mean, what I'm saying is most people fear when they see a revelation, you know, God or an angel or whatever. Which is, which is the appropriate response. And the reason, why, the reason why the angels say do not fear is because many times they're saying, don't be afraid of me. You don't need to be afraid of me. I'm here as the messenger <laughs> to give you good news, to give you peace, to give you hope, to give you a vision for what God has planned for your life. You're not standing before a holy and righteous God. You're just standing before an angel. Now, you're a little freaked out by that, and rightly so, but don't be afraid of me. But fear is a natural response to that which is holy and other. Okay, so as Christians, as as devout followers of Jesus Christ, me, I'm just a Jesus freak with an attitude. Should we be worried about terrorism, immigration, drugs, pot, prices? Isn't everything going to be okay with Jesus? We'll talk about it next Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Barrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. 
From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Oh, 421, okay. 21 minutes after fur o'clock. I'm talking like Frank now. Fur o'clock. Fur. That's the Beverly Hillbillies and Granny. Um, as Christians, should we be afraid? Should we have high anxiety? Should we worry? Should we care about terrorists or shootings or drug laws or immigration? I mean, really, seriously? That's what we're talking about. And we'll continue that in just a minute. But first, did you ever roll over your 401k from one job to another? Yeah, I know you did. You know that the average person waits almost two years after rolling over their 401k to finally look at it and discover the fees have gone up, the costs have gone up, the the, the, the interest rates are down. I mean, it's just a mess. Because we assume when we roll over, roll over, roll over, and they all rolled over and one fell out. Anyway, I don't know why that happened. When we roll over our 401ks, we assume everything stays the same and there's no way they're going to stay the same because they're with a new employer and that employer mandates certain things within our 401ks. Weiss Merkel Financial is running uh, uh, an opportunity this month for you to have them look at your 401k for nada, zippo, nothing. Why would they do that, you say? Because they're really smart people. And and and, Jay, and 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 James and Lauren believe that if you trust them to look at your 401k, maybe you'll trust them to look at all your retirement plans. We had one of our listeners go to one of their uh, passports to retirement this last Tuesday night, and, and, and this is what he wrote us. This, this came in as a text on Wednesday. Yes. I went to a Weiss Merkel event on retirement. Very informative and helpful. Lauren and James were informative helpful, and not at all boring. I appreciate the info that I receive, some in my head, some in my notes, and the hefty notebook. I will study the notebook. While I did thank them, please feel free to pass on my thanks again. Thank you, Mac, for having them on your program. And you're welcome, and I don't know who that is, but thank you very much. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm trying to bring people in my life that do things for me, that take care of me, that are there for me in my business needs, try to introduce them to you. You know, Weiss Merkel, uh, Service Legends, uh, The Golden Heart. You know, these are people who I believe are good quality people and, and they will help you. So there you go. Free look at your 401k. I don't care if you've had a 401k. How long have you had your 401k, Jebediah? I mean, you started working here, what, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago? Yeah, something like that. And, and have you had... Uh, w- w- never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Jebediah is so distracted in there today because Daisha, his significant other, is in there. And I'm telling you what, you know, I have a hard time focusing when my wife is sitting with me or something and now look at him he's he's red he's red faced okay a scared world needs a fearless church we've been reading this no one can blame people for being afraid the world is in a baptism of fire and whether or not this present conflict is the beginning of the ordeal such as a baptism it will surely come sooner or later God declares this by his voice of all the holy prophets since time began. Since time, there has never been a time on this earth when God is not speaking through prophets and saying, get ready, I'm coming back. I told you the rules. I told you the laws. And you just continue to ignore me. I am a jealous God. I want you to fear me. If you continue to do what you're doing, I will show up and vengeance is mine. And we couldn't do it. We couldn't do it right at all. So he came down here in the form of flesh, a man born of a virgin and taught us love, 
and forgiveness. You know, Jesus, Jesus didn't, Jesus didn't go on and 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 on about what we can and can't do. Oh, yes, there is scripture. The words are in red. But the message he left with us is love one another, love yourself, love your neighbor, and forgive. Have you ever been in a relationship with someone who can't forgive? You're looking at the accuser. I know. It's your daughter. It's your son. It's your husband. It's your wife. It's your mom. It's your dad. It's somebody you care deeply about. Someone that will be with you forever and a day. But good heavens. They simply cannot take responsibility for their own actions and ask for forgiveness. When you find someone in this world who can't ask for forgiveness and take responsibility for their actions, no matter how beautiful they may be, no matter how much you love them, no matter how you are tied to them through blood and family and and relationship, there is no Jesus if they can't love themselves Love thy neighbor, love thy enemy, and forgive. Don't forget that. Frank? Well, I want to ask a question. Um, Ask me? Anyone. Audience, anyone. You, Bob, Chris, anyone. Um, Christ always, in his invitations to mercy, mixed it with warnings of judgment. Was those warning of judgment meant to scare, or were they meant to invite why do, you, why do you think that he offers us mercy, but he also warns us of the replications of disobedience? Why does he warn us of the Rep- consequence? The consequences, the repercussions? Well, well, because he's a fair and loving God. He's, he's a dad. He's my papa. But is that meant to instill fear? Well, sure, we ought to be afraid. When I, you know, when I look at my grandson and I say, you better be home by 10 o'clock tonight because one minute after 10, you're grounded. Two minutes after 10, you're grounded twice. And three minutes after 10, you don't get the car for a week. Well, I would suggest uh, there's a difference between fear and an abnormal fear, a phobia. Let's say you have a phobia of uh, rattlesnakes. Uh, that fear is a natural respect. It's, uh, it's a God-given protection mechanism to fight or flight. Um, I'm, I'm not... I'm not Sure, I'm not really sure where A. W. Tozer or Chris. I'm not really sure the fear that is the bad kind of fear versus the fear that's the good kind of fear. Do we? Do we? Jesus warn? said there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You see, we if we don't understand if we can't. If we don't understand that there is condemnation, if we don't understand that there is something to be afraid of, and we just we just skirt it under the rug, and we just say there's there is no bad, there is no judgment, there is no wrath, there is no good news. The good news doesn't it doesn't make sense apart from death. God created humanity to live, not to die. We are going to die. We die as a result of our sin. Every one of us die because we are sinners. I die because I am a sinner. That is why I'm going to depart from this earth. That's why I'm going to die. That's why my body's going to die. Because I'm in a state of decay because of sin that I live in. In Jesus Christ, by faith in Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I am being born again, created anew, and be giving a new life. And now in Christ, there is no more condemnation for me. I do not live in a state of fear. If you are outside of that, there is fear and there is only fear. Yet the Bible says, Paul says, because of our unrighteousness, we suppress the truth. We don't want to know that. We don't want to talk about fear. We want to shut that down. We want to make it something other than what it is because we are unrighteous. But for the righteous, those who are in Christ Jesus, there is no fear. There is no condemnation. So we don't have anything to worry about. So I'm not afraid. So when I talk about the fear of God, I talk about it where it is rightly placed. I should be afraid of a holy God. And that is why when I come to him, I don't come to him clothed in my own strength. I don't come to him clothed in my own righteousness. I don't come to him saying, you know what? I kept the Sabbath and I didn't eat pork. Therefore, I am fine in your presence. No, I come before a holy God and I say, I am a sinner in need of a savior. You have provided the sacrifice necessary for my sin. I trust in that alone 
And it is through that that I can come to a holy, wrathful God and have a real and living relationship. If I don't have that clothing, if I don't have that whitewashed robe, I have nothing but condemnation. Okay, we have some preachers out there. I won't name any names, but they, their names have been bannied on this station before that is preaching a blessings gospel. They're preaching acceptance. They're preaching that God is all about love and God is all about acceptance. But as uh, the gentleman Del Tackett I was talking about last week was saying, that when we take when we take the masculine traits out of the church, we're left with the feminine traits. Where is the truth? Where is the where is the justice? Where is the stuff that comes from the, the discipline that comes from the masculine part of God? God's both feminine and masculine in the same being. So we're taking out part of God's, you know, we're taking out part of the equation in God's thorough message to us. So I'm saying, I guess is we've got some preachers out there that's just preaching the good things of God, but not saying there's judgment if you don't accept this. So so I'm, I guess I'm asking you, where do we draw the fine line here between what is good, healthy, normal fear and something that would be in the, that would start to blend into the abnormal fear? Right. One of the great things about what A.W. Tozer said is that he didn't... Uh, I disagree with him at the beginning. I have a theological disagreement with A.W. Tozer. I don't think things are going to get worse. I think things are going to get better. I actually believe that the gospel of the kingdom of God is going to be uh, make things better as the kingdom of God ex- expands. So the very beginning of what he's talking about in this article uh, is really the second chapter of a book he wrote. Uh, the title of the chapter is A Scared World Needs a Fearless church aw tozer wrote that at the end he says we will never the church christians we will never convince the scared world that there is peace at the cross if we continue to exhibit the same fears as those who make no profession of christianity so the first thing the first fear we have to to have to deal with is we have to we have to have a right fear of god We have to come into relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ by understanding that Christ took the punishment for my sin, relieving me of that condemnation. If we haven't done that, we don't begin in the right place. And otherwise, we're just living in the same world that the rest of the world's living in. If we want hope and we want peace, it's the the cliche old bumper sticker. No peace, no Christ, right? If you have no peace, if you have no Christ, you have no peace. If you want to know peace, you have to know Christ. This is a terrible way. It doesn't work on the radio. It's a bumper sticker. It's the two different kinds of no, N-O and K-N-W-O. You know what I'm talking about, Mac and English language words and letters. Yep. So if we talk about hope, hope isn't something that exists outside of that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Anything outside of relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is false hope. It's just man's wisdom. It's just an illusion. It's just a dream. I, I agree with that. But would you suggest that protecting our nation or doing putting putting things into putting certain mechanisms into process to protect our country from a terrorist attacks? Would that be giving into would that fall under abnormal fear or healthy fear? I don't think that's fear. I think that's wisdom. That's loving your neighbor. That's protecting your citizens. I think having safe roads, I think having a uh, well-armed and informed police department and uh, border patrol and army, those are all good things uh, that the civil uh, government should be involved in doing. Agreed. Okay, we're coming up on the break, 434. And when we come back, I want to hear from you, 515-244-0077. Should a scared world be a fearless church? We'll talk about it. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High Bee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do 
is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us. 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones the same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make Make you smile. That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 438, 22 minutes before the top of the hour, 22nd day of July in the third millennium of our Lord Jesus Christ. So do you have any thoughts on a scared world needs a fearless church? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not hearing from you. I'm, I'm assuming that you don't have any anxiety, that you don't care who's president, that that immigration, schmimmigration, uh, pot can be legalized, or it, it doesn't matter to you because you know the end of the book. Your only deal is Matthew 28, and that's to go out and make disciples of men because you know that if you can bring people, not to the Lord, because you can't do that, but you can bring him the message. And then the hound to heaven comes and nips them in the backside and they go, oh, that's the truth. Hmm. Or do you worry? You watch the convention last night and hear Donald Trump give his speech and go, well, maybe, may, maybe, I, can, maybe I can do this. Maybe, you know, he, he's not Bush. He's not Marco. He's not Christie. He, he's not Cruz. But... Anything but Hillary, like, right? Anybody but Hillary. A B H. Anybody but Hillary. Or do you tonight? I gotta tell you, I I I I have a bad habit of worrying about things. I got something on my mind today. It's taken first position in my head. I'm worrying about something that God's probably already got figured out and he knows the ending and He's just not willing to give me the envelope that says, and the winner is, or my plan is, or Mac, please don't worry. I got it. Yes, Frank. Uh, you said something about the barbarian way a lot this week, and I found a point of interest last night after the speech, the talking heads on some of the more liberal networks uh, compared Donald Trump's speech to that of uh called him a barbarian. It's it's barbaric speech, barbarian speech. I just wonder, thinking of the barbarian way you always talk about, whether that's good or bad. 
You got that uh, thing ready there, Jebediah? Let's roll that and let the listeners listen. Uh, the Barbarian Way is written by Edwin, ooh, I can't think of his last, McManus. And it is a book you, it is a book you should read. Um, you may not like it. Uh, I've given, I've probably given a hundred, no, not a hundred. I've probably given dozens of copies away. And sometimes I, I get them back and they say, I just couldn't get through it. It's, it's just, one lady looked at me and said, it's kind of barbaric. Yeah. See, the fact of the matter was eight of the 12 people that Jesus chose to follow him were barbarians. John the Baptist, who was sent first to prepare the way for the Lord, and to baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The who and the who? We got the God part, but who's the who and the who? Who's those second two names? What happened? One God, only one God. Commandment one, Moses' law. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The barbarians, the barbarians were our disciples. Let's listen to, uh, uh, I don't know if you want to call it the trailer uh, it's just the, the meat of this book. Uh, I recorded it. Uh, Jebediah put it together. And, and take a listen. Here, put your ear close to the radio. I want you to hear this now. Christianity has become our Shawshank. And our redemption will only come if we find the courage to escape the prison we have created for ourselves. Risking everything to live free is our only hope. Humanity's only hope. Jesus is being lost in a religion bearing his name. People are being lost because they cannot reconcile Jesus' association with Christianity. Christianity has become docile, domesticated, and civilized. We have forgotten that there is a kingdom of darkness stealing the hopes and dreams of the souls of humanity and our children, and they have no God. It is time to hear the barbarian call to form a barbarian tribe and to unleash the barbarian revolt. Let the invasion begin. Max World Daily, 3 to 5 on 99.3 The Truth. Hi. What was that? I think that's where you were saying, hi. <laughs> now, it, it's I, part of another it's, promo. It's got a blooper right. reel at the end. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm the barbarian. I, I don't know how you guys feel about that, and, and all of you guys in this room and in my studio, you've heard this a dozen times. You maybe have read the book. You know my absolute passion for this, this thinking process. It's not the book. It, it's not the, the writer. It's the fact that he, he says Christianity has become docile. We have become, we have become what, what's the word he says? Um... I don't know. I don't have it in front of me. We, 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 domesticated. Domesticated. Uncivilized. Thank you. Yeah. Domesticate. We have domesticated the word of Jesus. Think about that. We've made it run of the mill. We've made it average. We've made it that most people, when they hear the gospel, go blah, 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 blah. It means nothing to me. Why doesn't it mean anything to them? Is it because we sit on the sidelines and we worry about everything that they worry about. And so they say, why should I follow Jesus? This guy follows Jesus. He worries more than I do. Why have we gotten to the point that our churches are afraid as our bars and our nightclubs and our party places and our clubs and our casinos why isn't the church standing up and saying, with Christ, you won't have that addiction. With Christ, you won't have that divorce. With Christ, you won't have that worry. Why aren't we saying that? Is it true? With Christ, do we have fewer worries, fewer anxieties, fewer problems? The Bible says that nothing can separate us from the love of God, right? A.W. Tozer repeated that idea in this uh, small chapter, this small thing that he wrote. He said, nothing can separate us from the love of God, not death, nor life, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature. He said, surely a fear-ridden Christian has never, I'm sorry, 
here's what he says. This is a big old world and it is full of habitations of darkness, but nowhere in its vast expanse is there one thing of which a real Christian need to be afraid. Surely a fear ridden Christian has never examined his or her defenses. You mentioned worry there a little bit earlier, Mac, and you, and you talked about you've got stuff going on in your life right now that's very real that gives you pause. It gives you stress. It gives you worry. It gives you anxiety. And then you said, maybe I shouldn't be worried. Well, the world might say, don't worry about it. It'll be just fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. But the Bible says something different. The Bible doesn't ignore the fact that you have fears. The the Bible doesn't ignore the fact, Jesus doesn't ignore the fact that you're afraid. He's, He's not ignorant of those things. He invites you to trust him. He's, he's your papa, right? And he yes. says, let papa have it, right? Isn't, right. That, isn't, isn't that, that's different, that's different than don't worry about it, right? Because I can say that to someone that's going through something stressful and I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. If you're going through something difficult, what does it matter to me, right? So I can say, hey, don't worry about it. Be happy. Don't worry about it. Be happy. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus is acquainted with our grief. He understands our suffering. He's he's stared death in the face. He's he's been afraid. He knows what it means to be afraid. And he says, let me have that. He says, can you hand that to me? That fear, that worry, that anxiety, that not knowing. Can you hand that to me? So we don't push it away. We give it to somebody who's worth trusting. And, and maybe for some of us, we don't feel like we can trust Jesus. Maybe we don't feel like he's worth trusting. Maybe we feel like he's let us down. And so we don't want to trust him. But for those of us who do trust him, we can hand over our fear and anxiety and our worry to the Lord Jesus. And he takes it from us and we are set free. It's hard to do because we get scared i get scared we just have to practice that okay we're coming up on a break last break hank the bible answer man comes in at five here on the truth from the remax real estate concept studios this is webcast one live Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Ten minutes before 5, 22nd of July, coming into a hot, hot, hot weekend. I have been uh, given the blessing to officiate at a wedding tomorrow. Something I just love doing. 
I don't I don't charge for it. I mean, I know some pastors do, and they should. But for me, it's uh, a blessing, such a blessing. Tomorrow, that blessing's going to be hot. <laughs> hey, we're going to be in a farm field in Jasper County, and this is a biker wedding. And I don't mean folks that ride the bike trails with the cute little helmets and the funny shoes. I mean... <laughs> They also have cute helmets and funny shoes. I just want you to know. That's right. You're one of them, aren't you? That's right. The uh, groomsmen decided to be true bikers. And what kind of tuxedos do you think they've ordered? Suede? Close. Um, Lacquer. Leather. 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 Oh, it starts with an L. Yeah, leather, right? Leather. So tomorrow will be an experience that um, she, she asked me. How, how, how quickly can the service be? And I said, well, to be honest with you, there doesn't have to be a service. I'll sign the deal and we're done. Oh, no, I need something. And I said, well, like what? Can we both just say, I do, I do, and you say you are? <laughs> so anyway, going to so be So is this due to the fact of... And then tomorrow, Taste of Hope starts at 11 in the morning and goes till fireworks after uh, sundown. So what, it, does t- what does hope taste like? Uh, chicken. Chicken. Yeah. <laughs> okay. right. So is this due to the fact of the temperature tomorrow that they've decided to try to speed up the ceremony? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. When we originally had this, we had bridesmaids and grooms and, or, uh, you know, the guys and the girls and songs. And, and they wanted a, 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 is it called a hominy? The, the thing that the preacher reads? Um, I think there's that? an L in there. Homily. Homily. Anything? Okay. Mm-hmm. I just call it a sermon message. Yeah. But leather gets hot. Yeah, and, and they wanted two Bible readings, and they wanted somebody to play a guitar, and they wanted the lighting of the uh, of the uh, candle. What's the candle? The marital candle. The well, I'm a little confused. An outdoor wedding in July would potentially have anything but hot temperature. Yeah, but leather and heat that just doesn't go together. No, no, no. Right. I've already told him, man. I'm I'm in black shorts. That's anything certain. over sixty is too hot for Mac. Remember. Yeah. I mean, we, you got to realize it could be twice that temperature in the heat temperature tomorrow. We hit 115 yesterday. We're supposed to be at 112 today. This studio, just from the five of us being in here, has gained five degrees in two hours. 400 B, 400,000, Bob? 400, 400 BTUs. 400 BTUs. 400 BTUs per, BTUs per yeah. s- what, second? Per person. Per person. Yeah. So anyway, take it easy this weekend. Taste of Hope tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Everything's free. Free food. Free face paints for the kids, free funnel cake, free lemonade, free fireworks, free, 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 free. It's, free parking? It, it's Yeah. Yeah. It's what we do at Hope. Once a year at the end of VBS, we throw this big Jesus party. There's two services, I think five and seven, and they're outside. Maybe they'll move them inside tomorrow. They've, they've done that before. Anyway, before we wrap up on this Friday, we've been talking about a scared world needs a needs a fearless church and this is a uh, article written by aw tozer from his book the world playground or battleground and i want i want to read you something again and if you didn't hear it the first time you'll you'll hear it this time surely bible reading christians should be the last persons on earth to give away to hysteria the world is on fire it's ending the wrong president Drug laws, immigration, abortion, same sex this, no sex this. What is right is now wrong and what is wrong is now right. What is up is down. What was man is now woman. And what was woman is now man. You get it? You get how messed up it is? If Bible-reading Christians should give away to hysteria, then they are redeemed from their past offenses. No, no. See, Christians are redeemed from their past offenses, kept in their present circumstances by the power of an almighty, powerful God, and their future is safe in his hands. Did you hear me? The Bible says your future, you follow Jesus, your future is safe in his hands. You trust God? No. No. You want to worry about something because you don't think God can handle it. So you're going to give him most of it, but not all of it. Oh, I, I'm a Christian. I, I love Jesus. I, I love God. I, but uh, I just can't give him my marriage. 
I, I just can't give him my health. I can't, I can't give him what's going on with my granddaughter or my, my, my kids. I can't do, I, I got to hang on to it. God has promised to support you in the flood, protect you from the fire, feed you in the famine, shield you from your enemies and hide you, hide you in his safe chambers. If we are called upon to suffer, we may be perfectly sure that we shall be rewarded for every pain and every blessing. Underneath will be the everlasting arms and within all will be the deep assurance that all is well with our souls. Nothing, nothing, Paul writes in Romans, can separate us from the love of God, not death, nor life, nor height, nor depth, or any other creature. This is a big old world, and it is full of the darkness. But nowhere in its vast expanse is there one thing of which a real Christian needs to be afraid. Surely a fear-ridden Christian has never examined his or her defenses. A fear-stricken church cannot help a scared world. Let me read that again, church. Are you listening, church? Are you listening? A fear-stricken church cannot help a scared world. We who are in the secret place of safety must begin to talk and act like it. We, above all, who dwell upon this earth should be calm, hopeful, buoyant, and cheerful. We'll never convince the scared world that there is peace at the foot of the cross if we continue to exhibit the same fears as those who make no profession of a relationship with Jesus Christ. This weekend's going to be hot. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to get irritable. Tempers are going to be short. Lines are going to be long. People aren't going to want to act like Jesus. But that's what he calls us to do in the worst and the best for better or worse. He calls us to be like him. You say, I'm not Jesus. We're supposed to imitate him. Well, I just can't anymore. Life is too hard. It's you that Jesus wants to wrap his arms around and tell you something that you don't want to believe. But the truth is you're forgiven. So as you're forgiven, forgive. It's what he teaches us to do. I'll see you at church.